So this is the worksheet for the variety of doing organisms. Take care of bacteria, fungi, proctis were the three kingdoms that we talked about. Now viruses can cause disease but are not classified as living. Explain why viruses are not classified as living. Because they do not move, do not reproduce, do not excrete, do not respond, do not feed, and do not control internal conditions. Now name a disease caused by a virus. Now again, we have to name a disease. Now I told you a disease about, first of all, there are two types of viruses. We have, if a virus contains DNA, it is known as DNA virus. But if a virus contains RNA, it is known as a retrovirus. So that retrovirus is the one that causes HIV AIDS. So this is one of the disease that is caused by a virus. A new group of pathogen called prions was discovered in 1980s. Prions are simple proteins. All known prion diseases can be fatal because the immune system does not recognize prions as foreign. So just two ways in which prions differ from viruses. Now there they have given us a hint. What is that? The prions are simple proteins and also uh, from the difference between so we can say that uh, they have different genetic material. Uh, genetic material that is different. Moreover, uh, viruses have a protein coat. Have a protein coat. Prions itself is like a protein. Okay. Protein coat. Whose protein coat ka naam kya hota? Capsid. If you remember. Okay. Moreover, viruses can act as vectors. Vectors kya hota? which transfer a disease from one place to another. The table gives features of three different groups of organisms. Complete the table by putting a tick in the box if the organisms in the group have the feature and a cross in the box if the organisms in the group do not have the feature. The first one has been done for you. We have bacteria, fungus, virus, all our pathogens, cell molds of it, fungi, karlate. Is bacteria a pathogen? Yes or no? No, it's not. Uh, are the cell walls made of chitin? No, they are made of peptidoglycan. Do bacteria contain a DNA in a nucleus? It's a prokaryote. Prokaryote do not have their DNA inside a nucleus. Moreover, does bacteria respire? Yes, it does. Group of organisms, ki baat kare, we talk about fungus. Now, fungus, ki baat kare, fungus does not have a protein coat. It is not a pathogen. Cell walls are made up of chitin. Yes, cell walls are made up of chitin. And its DNA also contains a nucleus and they also respire. Viruses, ki baat kare, they are pathogens, but they do not have a cell wall, they do not contain a DNA in the nucleus, and they do not carry out this life process known as respiration. So, this is a table, a very important one to how to differentiate between the uh, three kingdoms in front of you, which is bacteria, fungus, and virus. The following organisms can be classified into major groups. We have amoeba, lactobacillus, bean, mucor, and mosquito. From the list above, give the name of a bacterium. bacterium Now, lactobacillus was one of the bacteria that we just studied in the previous chapter. That is going to be a lactobacillus bacteria, the rod-shaped bacteria. Then we have a fungus. A type of fungus, mucor is a type of fungus. Mucor, mushrooms, yeast, these are all fungi. Flowering plant, a bean plant, normal bean plant is a flowering plant. Just the other plants, wheat, agriculture, they are all your normal flowering plants. An animal. Which of these is an animal? Obviously, mosquito is an animal. It's an insect. Na, so, insects kis kinder fall hote? they fall under the animal. Amoeba itself is a uh, sekte, proctist, or amoeba ko proctist kinder karte, and it's also a micro or a unicellular one, by the way. Viruses are not included in most classification systems. Give three ways in which viruses differ from other living organisms. Now, how do viruses differ from other living organisms? I'm saying that viruses only reproduce inside the living cells. They only reproduce inside the living cells. Also, they have a protein coat. Other uh, living organisms do not have a protein coat. Other than that, you can also say that, yeah, it can contain, it has no cytoplasm. 
yeah, no mitochondria. No chloroplasts. No nucleus. So there are a lot of differences. Iskilava, they also don't carry out, they don't carry out these seven life processes. Now, what seven life processes kya hai? So seven life processes are the Mrs. Grandman. Movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, nutrition. The seven life processes are not carried out by viruses. Give one example of a disease caused by a virus. Name the organism it infects and describe its effect on the organism. Now, we have disease. Ka naam dena. Let's see if I talk about AIDS. I mention it The name of the disease is HIV, AIDS. Which organism does it affect? Animals? No. It's humans. Ke it's mostly common in humans. And what is the effect of HIV AIDS? First of all, just remember, it mostly affects the immune system of the person. And hence, he or she is more prone to get infected. Matlab ke wo zada prone ho jate hain infect hone ki wajah se because it mostly affects the immune system of the person and hence he or she is more prone to get infected. Agar aapka immune system weak ho jayega, now what is the immune system? Immune system is your body's defense against diseases and if it gets weak, then it's trouble. The photograph shows some viruses, suggests two reasons why most biologists do not classify viruses as living organisms. Again, the same repeated question, why viruses are not classified as living organisms because again, do not respire, yeah, do not excrete, yeah, do not reproduce or do not feed. There are a lot of examples, but you can life process. Ko mention kar sakte. Name one example of a virus. Koi ek virus ka gram yaan pe naam le. Uh, for example, I have HIV virus, then I have that tobacco mosaic virus that affects the plants. Tobacco mosaic virus, Iskilava, Ebola virus, Ebola virus, COVID 19, COVID 19 virus. There are so many examples. Influenza virus, influenza virus, behavior, soil flu. So many examples of viruses, HIV, tobacco, then we have Ebola, influenza, swine flu, COVID-19. All of these are the examples of viruses. You can only write one of these in your paper. You'll be writing any one. Give one structure difference between a bacterium and a virus. Bacteria or virus, what structure difference? First of all, bacteria are bigger. Bacteria are bigger. Viruses are smaller. This is one of the difference. Iskilava, flagellum, flagella, sorry. Flagella or flagellum is present in bacteria. This is not in viruses. Other than that, uh, bacteria has cytoplasm. Viruses do not have a do not have cytoplasm. Flagella kya hota? What is flagellum? If you ever see a typical bacterial cell, this is known as flagella. The tail of the bacterial cell is known as flagella. Antibiotics are chemicals used to kill pathogens that cause infections. Name the type of organism that makes antibiotics. Take organism ka naam dena hai that is used to make antibiotics. Now remember, we have a bad bacteria, but we also have a good bacteria. So bacteria and fungi can both be used to make anti, uh, antibiotics. Name the type of pathogen that is killed by antibiotics. Antiviral are there to kill virus. Antibiotics are there to kill bacteria. But just imagine you are using penicillin to create an antibiotic or vaccine, and then you're using the same bacteria vaccine to kill a bacteria. 
तो एंटीबायोटिक्स आर यूज अगेंस्ट बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन होगी दे कैन नॉट अगर लेट्स से यू आर इन्फेक्टेड विद कोविड नाइनटीन एंड एंटीबायोटिक वॉन्ट वर्क ऑन यू बिकॉज एंटीबायोटिक्स आर ओनली देयर फॉर बैक्टेरियल इन्फेक्शन दे आर नॉट फॉर एंटीवायरल some antibiotics are no longer effective in killing pathogens use your knowledge of natural selection to explain why wo kehte hain kuch antibiotics jo hai na kya hote hain ab wo zyada effective nahi in killing pathogens this is not related to this chapter we will be studying this later on but remember that some bacteria undergo mutation mutation kya hoti hai a change in the genetic material jab koi bhi uh, bacteria mutation undergo karta hai it's genetic structure changes first of all moreover there is now variation un bacteria ke andar ek variation aa jati hai this is also one of your upcoming chapters ki variation kya hoti hai moreover they start to survive matlab ki they are not affected by those old antibiotic because they become resistant some bacteria become resistant that is why if you ask your parents they would be telling you some names of those antibiotics that were there in 1980s 1990s but they are no more available now for example softan ek bahut famous hoti thi uh, then iske alawa aapke paas uh, kaun si mucator hoti thi ek theek hai these were some antibiotics that were really common in the 1980s and 1990s but they had to stop being sold in the market because the bacteria that it was uh, made to fight that bacteria actually became resistant Once the bacteria became resistant, now those previous antibiotics were no longer affected. Again, the market was now filled with some new antibiotics. This is, for example, like we are COVID-19. Ki baat kare. COVID-19 at a point also became resistant to vaccine. We saw new variants. COVID-19 undergo uh, it did undergo some mutations as well. For example, first we got a COVID-19, then we got a COVID-19 Delta variant, then we got a COVID-19 Omicron variant. What are these? These are different variants: COVID-19 virus, COVID-19 Delta virus, COVID-19 Omicron virus. This is all happening due to mutation. But I'm here to say, na, every uh, you can say every type of those uh, after the mutation, you have to change the vaccine as well because maybe the vaccine might be applicable on the old COVID-19, but the new variant, the Delta Cron, ho gaya, ya Omicron, ho gaya, the vaccine might not be effective on that because they have become इसके अलावा, they then multiply. When they become resistant, they then multiply. Now the Omicron ये कोई भी नया बैक्टीरिया, they multiply, they replicate. Once they replicate, they spread, they produce offspring. They produce offspring. The use of pesticide. may result in an increase in the number of pests or no need to do this now this is from your chapter of natural selection we haven't covered this yet okay the table shows four different groups of organisms complete the table to give an example of each group animals ke agar main ek example to given just let's talk about an example of animal kya ho sakti hai human फंजाई की अगर मैं एक एग्जांपल लूं, आई टोल्ड यू म्यूकर इज अ टाइप ऑफ फंजाई ठीक है यीस्ट मशरूम्स टोड स्टूल्स बैक्टीरिया की एग्जांपल ले अगर लैक्टोबैसिलस यू शुड आल्सो नो मोर लैक्टोबैसिलस के अलावा यू शुड आल्सो नो सैल्मोनेला यू शुड आल्सो नो अबाउट न्यूमोकोकस द राउंड शेप बैक्टीरिया ठीक है दीज आर सम एग्जांपल्स ऑफ बैक्टीरिया दैट यू शुड नो म्यूकर के आगे भी मैं लिख देता हूँ मशरूम्स दीज आर सम मोर एग्जांपल्स ऑफ पंजाब मूविंग ऑन प्रोक्टिस्ट प्रोक्टिस्ट में कौन कौन से आते हैं एमेबा या अदर दैट वी हैव प्लास्मोडियम You only have to list one. I'm just telling you, so आपके पास ज़्यादा data इकट्ठा हो जाए कि plasmodium भी है. Uh, then we have algae also. I forgot algae. ठीक है ये सारे proctus kingdom में से आते हैं. Plasmodium इनमें से जो है ना, salmonella also causes the salmonella virus. Basically, salmonella disease एक होता था जो कि chickens में से arise हुआ था. 
it basically came from birds and chickens. Then plasmodium ke baat karein. Plasmodium is the one that causes malaria and dengue through the anopheles female mosquito. Different groups have different features. Complete the table below to show if the feature is present in all, some or none of them in each group. Some of the table has been completed for you. Fungi ki baat karein. All fungi, uh, uh, all fungi are multicellular. No, some are. Okay. After that, if we talk about bacteria, are bacteria all multicellular? Yes. Did cells have nucleus? No. Bacteria have nucleus? No. Do crocodiles have a nucleus? No. None. Cells contain chloroplasts. Yes. Acha. Cells contain chloroplast. Uh, fungi can the chloroplast? Hote? Yes. All of them have chloroplast. Do cells have cell wall? Fungi has a cell wall made up of chitin. Yes, it does. Moreover, cells have cell wall. Bacteria also has a cell wall made up of peptidoglycan. Do proctors have a cell wall? Uh, if we talk about proctors, so yes, yeah, some of them have a cell wall. Some of them don't. This is a very important point to remember because some proctors have a cell wall and some of them don't. Give one way in which the structure of a virus differs from a bacteria. If we look at it, one structure we have told you, I just told you, same repeated question. Give one way in which the structure of virus differs from a bacteria. Applicative viruses are smaller. They don't have cytoplasm. They don't have membrane bound organelles. Membrane bound organelles ka kya matlab hota? Membrane bound organelles hota hai. Ki we have chloroplast. We'll be doing chapter number four. Just in the organelles ki baat karenge. Jaise ki chloroplast. That is a double membrane bound. Mitochondria are double membrane. Nucleus are double membrane, ribosome single membrane. Hai. So viruses do not have membrane bound organelles. Moreover, they also don't have a flagellum. Bacteria and viruses can act as pathogen. Give an example of a disease caused by a virus. Virus ki ek disease ka naam lete hai, like HIV AIDS. One example yaan te diya. I also told you to go mosaic, influenza, flu, cold, measles. Measles kis ki wajah se hote? Measles is caused by variola virus. Abhi ek monkey pox bhi aaya hai. Uh, that has just uh, I was there at a workshop yesterday to wahan pe humne monkey box ke bare mein dekha tha how it has risen. that was also a virus ye wo bhi to ek virus hi hai although plants and animals have many different features they also have some features in common the table lists some features in each box place a tick if the feature is present or place a cross if the feature is absent one has been done for you agar hum baat kare plants aur animals ki they can move from place to place plants cannot move animals yes animals can move from one place to another can plants carry out photosynthesis yes can animals carry out photosynthesis no are plants multicellular yes animals they are also multicellular do plants have cell walls yes they do kisse bani hoti hai cellulose do animals have cell walls no they don't Plants, they do, uh, do they store carbohydrates as glycogen? No, they store it as starch. They store it as starch. Animals store carbohydrate in the form of glycogen. Organisms that cause disease are known as pathogen. Give two groups of organisms that include pathogen. Kon kon se ho sakte pathogen? Bacteria is a pathogen. Pathogens here then that cause disease. Then you have viruses. The two most common examples. Fungi bhi to hai. Fungi also causes athlete foot. Talk was proctus bhi hai. Proctus ke in the plasmodium hai. Plasmodium causes dengue, fever. Fungi hai. Fungi can cause uh, athlete's foot. Viruses hai. Viruses can cause influenza, COVID, a lot of them. Because bacteria hai. Bacterial infections bhi hota. Doctors sometimes give antibiotics to very ill patients. The passage below describes the treatment. Complete the sentences in the passage by writing a suitable word or words on each of the dotted lines. Antibiotic solution is given to the patient through a tube. The tube is connected. Uh, 
ये वाला छोड़ दें दिस इज फ्रॉम आवर चैप्टर ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट इन एनिमल्स ये क्वेश्चन जो है ये आपका नेक्स्ट चैप्टर से है uh, ये हमारे चैप्टर नंबर एट है ट्रांसपोर्ट इन एनिमल्स लीव दिस फॉर नाउ A student is given leave this one too. This is also from uh, nutrition. Here, our nutrition chapter is here. Ah, here we can do it. Different groups of organisms store carbohydrates as different molecules. Complete the table to show an example from each group of organisms and tell how do they store carbohydrate. Animals. Plants and fungi. Example from a group. Now you're going to uh, tell me the answer right now. ठीक है पहले बताएं. Example from the group of fungi. Name anyone. Mm. The mushrooms. Can you speak a little louder? I can't hear you. The mushroom. Yeah, exactly. Mushrooms हो सकते हैं. Yeast हो सकता है. Okay. Now tell me the molecule used to store carbohydrates in animals. um glycogen exactly glycogen plants mein kya hota hai starch exactly what about fungi um i am not sure glycogen same as animals got it okay so these are the types of storage molecule jo ki aapko animals plants aur fungi mein milte hain and this is the end of your today's worksheet हमने आज बायो में एक और वर्कशीट कर ली है फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट टू चैप्टर्स टुडे आई विल बी अपलोडिंग चैप्टर नंबर 1 चैप्टर नंबर 2 ऑफ बायोलॉजी एंड दीस वर्कशीट्स एज वेल टुमारो यू विल बी हैविंग अ टेस्ट ऑफ योर बायोलॉजी चैप्टर नंबर 1 एंड चैप्टर नंबर 2 द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म्स एंड द वैरायटी ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म्स इन दोनों के आपके टेस्ट भी हो जाएंगे लेट मी सेव दिस वर्कशीट और मैं आपको यहां से दिखा देता हूं Let me open up a short video. and viruses and the aim of this video is to give you an overview of what they all are so don't worry about remembering everything i just want you to understand what makes them all different if we exclude viruses for a second these other five groups are the five kingdoms of life so almost all living organisms will be in one of these five groups viruses though are the odd one out because as we'll see later they're not actually living organisms so aren't in any of the kingdoms of life the other thing that i want to point out before we go through each of them individually is that these four animals plants fungi and protoctists are all eukaryotes or eukaryotic organisms this means they're made up of eukaryotic cells which have certain things in common like the fact that their dna is in the form of chromosomes or that their dna is found in a nucleus on the other hand bacteria are classed as prokaryotes so we sometimes call them prokaryotic organisms and they don't have a nucleus their dna is just loose in their cell they're also between 10 and 100 times smaller than eukaryotic cells and remember viruses don't count as organisms So they don't get classed as eukaryotic or prokaryotic. But for perspective, they're another 10 to 100 times smaller than prokaryotic cells.
So let's now run through all of these groups one by one, starting with animals. You probably know this kingdom pretty well already, so there's not too much to say. Although we don't know for sure, our best estimate is that there's somewhere between 5 and 10 million different species of animals on Earth. Ranging from humans, to chickens, to ladybirds, to lionfish. What all animals have in common though, is that they're multicellular, they're heterotrophs, and most of them reproduce sexually. The term multicellular just means that each individual organism is made up of loads of cells, rather than just one. For example, it's thought that an adult human is made up of around 40 trillion cells. Meanwhile, heterotrophs just means that animals have to get their energy from other organisms. For example, we have to eat plants or other animals in order to get the energy that we need. Moving on to plants, this kingdom is pretty familiar as well, and probably includes around 300,000 species, ranging from redwood trees, to bee orchids, to tomato plants, to water lilies. Like animals, plants are multicellular, so they're made up of lots of different cells. But importantly, they're autotrophs rather than heterotrophs. This means that they get their energy from the sun using photosynthesis rather than by consuming other organisms. Next up, we have fungi, which are a bit harder to explain. Some fungi, like the mushrooms that you might eat, or the molds that can spoil your food, are multicellular organisms. But other fungi, like the yeast that we use for baking bread, are unicellular, which means single-celled, so each cell is its own organism. Although some fungi look a bit like plants, a key difference is that fungi can't photosynthesize. Instead, they have to get their energy from other organisms, like animals do. So they count as heterotrophs. Weirdly though, we often refer to fungi as saprotrophs instead, because most fungi feed using saprotrophic nutrition. This is a process whereby they secrete digestive enzymes onto some food outside of their body, wait for the enzymes to break down the food, and then absorb the broken down nutrients back into their body. So they're basically doing digestion outside of their body. Another key feature of fungi is that some of the multicellular ones have a body called a mycelium, which is made up of loads of little thread-like structures called hyphae. So just remember that loads of hyphae together make up a mycelium. Another thing to note is that although it's pretty rare, some fungi can be considered pathogens, which means that they can cause disease in humans. For example, it's a fungus that causes athlete's foot. If we move on to protoctists, the first thing that I want to clarify here is that the terms protoctists, protoctista, protists, and protista all mean basically the same thing. So don't worry about which word you use, they all refer to the same kingdom of organisms. But for this video, I'll use the term protoctists. Nearly all protoctists are unicellular, so single-celled organisms. But there's still a huge amount of variety between the different species. For example, some species, like chlorella or euglena, are a bit like plant cells, in that they have chloroplasts which allow them to photosynthesize. Whereas other species, like amoeba, are more like animal cells, and have to consume other organisms to get their energy. A last point to mention is that most protoctists have nothing to do with humans, but a few of them do count as pathogens and can cause disease. For example, the species Plasmodium is a thing that causes malaria. Next, we have bacteria, which we'll be coming back to in other videos, because there's loads of interesting stuff to know about them. But for the basics, these are single-celled organisms that live just about everywhere you can imagine, including on your skin and in your intestines. Although some species of bacteria can photosynthesize, none of them have chloroplasts, and most of them feed off other organisms, 
either living organisms like ourselves or dead ones like fallen leaves. Scientists think that there are probably way more species of bacteria than all of the other kingdoms combined. And although a few of them can cause disease, like salmonella, which can cause food poisoning, most of them don't have anything to do with humans. And many others are actually really helpful, like the bacteria in our intestines, which help us to digest our food. Lastly, we have viruses, which are basically super tiny particles. It's actually really hard to imagine just how small viruses are. But to give you a reference, you'd be able to fit almost a million of them across the width of a single fingernail. Now, we call them particles because they don't count as cells. And remember, they're not living at all. Viruses come in loads of different shapes and sizes, so it's hard to be too specific. But their basic structure involves a protein coat around the outside, surrounding some genetic material on the inside, which could be DNA or RNA. The main thing to remember about viruses is that they can only reproduce inside living cells. So they have to infect other organisms, like animals, plants, protoctists, fungi, or bacteria, and use their cells to replicate. Because of this, we call them parasites, which just means that they depend on another organism to grow and reproduce. For example, they can't reproduce without infecting something like an animal or a bacteria. One last thing to add is that unlike the other groups that we've seen so far, all viruses can be thought of as pathogens, because they always cause harm to the other living organisms when they use their cells to reproduce. A few examples of viruses include the influenza virus, which causes influenza, tobacco mosaic virus, which affects tobacco and tomato plants, HIV, which can cause AIDS, and of course, COVID-19. Anyway, that's everything for today's video. So I hope that was helpful for you. As I said at the beginning, the main thing I wanted you to take away from this is just a general understanding of the differences between these different groups of organisms. There was a lot of detail here, and the important thing wasn't remembering it all, but just getting that sense of what they are. And this is all for the biology class. Uh, take a five minutes break and then join again for chemistry.